a carbon dioxide sucking plant just opened in Zurich. The alarming rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide has led scientists to develop removal technologies to counter climate change. One such company in Switzerland has built a plant that directly removes this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The Climeworks plant is located on top of a waste recovery facility, which provides it with heat and electricity. Air containing carbon dioxide and other molecules are blown through several carbon dioxide collectors. The plant currently has 18 such collectors, which are large boxes fitted with filters that capture more than 2,400 kilograms of carbon dioxide each day. Carbon dioxide binds to the amines in the filter, while other molecules pass through and return to the atmosphere. Once saturated, the filter is heated to 100 degrees Celsius, causing the carbon dioxide to unbind and be extracted. The filtration system can be reused several thousand times, allowing this process of removal and collection to be a continuous cycle. The carbon dioxide collected by the plant can be stored underground, used to help make renewable fuels and materials, or supplied to the food and beverage industry. Climeworks provides 900 tons of carbon dioxide annually to a nearby greenhouse, which has reportedly increased their crop yield by 20%. Climeworks also hopes to remove 1% of global carbon dioxide emissions by 2025. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Keep watching to learn about other technologies that can combat climate change. Carbon turned to stone in climate change breakthrough. Researchers in Iceland are hailing a potential game changer for climate change after successfully converting carbon to rock. The project could help to reduce global warming by burying the waste CO2 produced by burning fossil fuels. Scientists at the Hultishedi geothermal power plant in Iceland have converted carbon dioxide into the volcanic rock basalt. Research has pumped 230 tonnes of CO2 into rock 500 metres underground, dissolving the gas in water to prevent it from escaping. More than 95% of the gas turned to stone within two years, speeding up a natural process that takes hundreds or thousands of years. A potential problem for the technique is that it requires 25 tonnes of water for every tonne of buried CO2. However, researchers say seawater can be used which is abundant at coastal sites. The project is seen as an improvement on existing carbon capture and storage methods that store CO2 as a gas, causing concern about potential leaks. Pigeon-mounted sensors give London air quality readings. A team of pigeons has begun taking to the skies with state-of-the-art technology designed to measure air pollution in Britain's capital. The Pigeon Air Patrol birds are each strapped with tiny backpacks housing sensors to measure levels of nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and other volatile compounds in the air. The squadron is made up of 10 pigeons. The program will offer people on the ground the most up-to-date information on the air they're breathing. Users may tweet at Pigeon Air. The system then responds with current readings on a scale ranging from moderate to extreme. This is the latest campaign to combat air pollution by technology company Plume Labs. The French company is also planning to mobilize 100 Londoners to carry backpacks with sensors for on-the-ground pollution monitoring. An estimated 9,500 people die in London every year as a result of long-term exposure to air pollution. Around the world, the number of premature deaths caused by air pollution is nearly 7 million people annually. Plume Labs has exceeded its crowdfunding goal of raising £10,000 to be able to fund plans for the live air map of London, with information generated by sensors on human patrollers. The birds are being employed for a three-day test study only, after which they'll retire back to the care of their owner. Fuel-free boats embark on two-week fish tracking mission. British scientists have deployed a small fleet of autonomous boats as part of a marine environmental study. Three fuel-free robot boats sail from Plymouth Harbor on Thursday on a two-week fish tracking mission in and around marine protected areas. The Autonaut, Sea Enduro, and SV3 Wave Glider, which all run on solar power and wave power, will collect data on water temperature and salinity. 
Scientists from Britain's Marine Biological Association have released place, sole, and brill tagged with pingers in the surrounding waters. The researchers will study the fish's interaction with the environment based on pings picked up by the robot boats and listening stations placed on the seabed. The success of this mission could bring about a new trend in marine exploration, using autonomous boats that can run on wind, solar, and wave power for months. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Large-scale tidal energy farm to be installed in Scotland. The world's first large-scale tidal energy farm will soon be installed in Scotland. The 1.5 megawatt turbines stand at 16 meters tall and each have three 8 meter long blades. Four will be installed off the northern coast of Scotland between Caithness and Orkney. The turbines have a 360 degree yaw capacity, meaning they can rotate and operate as the wind changes direction. Developer Atlantis Resources hopes to install 269 turbines in the area, a move that could provide energy for 175,000 homes. According to the Scottish Government, the country holds one quarter of Europe's offshore wind resources.